Pokemon fusions is one of the coolest concepts ever thought of. Combining the attributes, typings, moves, and looks of two individual Pokemon to create a whole new being. And this is a Pokemon game that takes place in Kanto where you can fuse any two Pokemon together to create some insanely new cool Pokemon. Here's the story of how crazy our adventure was and all the amazing fusions we encountered along the way. We started off our journey like any other Pokemon game, grabbing our starter and the choice was obvious. Awful, terrible, and god tier. Then our rival starts off by fusing the other two Pokemon we rejected to create this abomination known as the weakest Pokemon ever. <laughs> Then we proceed to get Pokeballs and head to the first route to see what we can fuse with our starter Aegislash. And what's a better Pokemon to ask for than a future pseudo legendary? Now I'm immediately popping off because Dragon and Steel type is one of the best typings you could ever have. It neutralizes all of Dragon's weaknesses, Ice, Dragon, and Fairy. So basically you're only weak to fighting and ground. But then I learned only one side is a custom Sprite fusion and it wasn't the Dragon Steel type. Which to make this more fun, we're pretty much gonna only do custom fusions because those are obviously the coolest. It's better to look at this than this. This first fusion was the beginning of our insane journey we were about to have. That is so cool! Now you should know we decided to make this more difficult by doing a Nuzlocke, which if you didn't know, basically takes Pokemon and makes it a lot harder by limiting Pokemon encounters, and if a Pokemon ever faints, they're dead. With this game being all about fusions, we are allowed to get two encounters per route to create some insane fusions, but if a fusion ever faints, we lose both Pokemon. Pokemon. So we have to really be careful to not lose anything or they're gone forever. We then move to acquire a few more fusions. Frankie, Chair, Momo, and Woo. Look at this short king that evolves and has his villain art. You cannot convince me this doesn't look like a teenager that's up to no good. Just in the first few battles, I can see how freaking cool the Pokemon fusions are and how down bad my chat was. Oh god, I I'm still embarrassed for them. We were able to evolve Woo one more time and I absolutely love this little guy and enter into to Pewter City. I'm already stoked for our first gym fight, but I noticed some things. My dude Brock must be winning a lot because this city has had some upgrades since I've last been here. And a really cool thing, you can go over to Route 3 without even fighting the gym first, so we get a new encounter. Oh no. Oh no, we're gonna be able to get Regigigas without slow start. All right, now seriously, there's no way we catch this, right? <gasps> Yeah, I slept great that night. I mean, this is Regigigas. Obviously, he has insane stats, but he's rendered useless with his ability Slow Start. But with fusions, he will gain a brand new typing and a completely new ability. Now, I'm sure you're like me, on the edge of your seat, ready to see what crazy Pokemon fusion we're about to- yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. And I know we said only custom fusions, but we didn't have one available, so we'll change this after the first gym. We proceed to the first gym to take on Brock, but I noticed the gym typings are randomized, and it turns out to be a psychic gym. Also, you're only allowed to battle with the same amount of Pokemon that the gym leader has. So we pick our two Pokemon, but luckily his team was pretty easy with our brand new addition, and we grab our first gym badge. Then I learned this game not only takes place in Kanto, but has two regions with Johto in it as well. It's basically Heart Gold and Soul Silver but you flipped it and you start in Kanto. Today, we're only focused on becoming the champion of Kanto, but if this video gets 20,000 likes, we'll do a part two and take on Johto as well. Now, celebrating would have to wait because immediately after this, I'm humble. I mean, it's not a hardcore Nuzlocke either, though, so I can technically heal. Oh! <gasps> I just couldn't believe we lost our starter ace. I was so distraught that this early on, I'm no longer gonna have my future Dragonite in Aegislash. I don't know about you, but I always use my starter throughout the entire run, so for it to die in the Nuzlocke, absolutely killed me. With it only being the beginning of our journey, we have to dust ourselves off and head to Mount Moon. Here we're at least able to catch two new Pokemon, which allows us to defuse the monstrosity that we created and form one of the coolest looking Dark Souls boss things that the chat called Smash. I told you, they're down cataclysmic. Please pray for them in the comments. We made our way through Mount Moon and I learned really fast that the story is definitely going to be a bit different than my usual Kanto journey. We run into what looks like a triple fusion, but it ultimately fails 
Battles, and I'm sure this is not the last time we'll see Team Rocket trying to manipulate fusions even further than they already are. We get our next two encounters before Cerulean and fuse them together to what might be my favorite fusion yet. It's a little baby Sif the Wolf from Dark Souls, or even a baby Zacian. We named her leader after a member in the chat, but you're telling me this pup isn't gonna lead us to victory this entire game? But then we head over to our rival on Nugget Bridge, and I was not ready for what was about to happen. And now I'm sensing a pattern. Every time something really good happens to us, something awful happens directly after. So we had Smash on the field as an Empoleon Lapras fusion comes out. So obviously I'm hoping it's water type, but my Mega Drain was not very effective and he red cards me into a Swords Dance. It's now plus two attack. It has to be a Steel and Ice type and I panic and go for Mud Shot. And this was the last time that Whoop would ever use an attack. I, I couldn't believe it. Once again, another beautiful Pokemon is taken from me. And he was just so young. Please spam the comments, RIP Whoop, because he didn't deserve this. God! Not knowing how to grieve because I had to finish the battle, I go to Frankie hoping he could do something, but absolutely does zero damage, and then I almost lose him too. And now I'm starting to question, am I really about to lose with only one gym badge? I basically have to switch into Momo, just praying for a body slam, which it does work, but then he goes for another Swords Dance, and he's now plus four and pecks me, and we lose Momo. My only hope at this point is we go back to Smash and just pray somehow we can kill this thing. Now, if this thing has Ice Shard, it's over. Priority plus four, I'm gone. We go for knockoff, and thank God we get a crit and finish up this battle. I mean, it is a win at the end of the day, but myself and my chat are still mourning the loss of Woop. <laughs> We end up destroying the rest of Nugget Bridge in honor of Whoop, and I'm just ready to get a new encounter. We add a new addition to our team, two amazing Pokemon with both great special attack and speed, and we decided to name him Fluffy, which looking at it now, it looks a little bit more spiky, but Fluffy was another member in the chat. We make our way to see Bill and see some incredible Pokemon fusions along the way. I mean, just look at this guy. And there were some script changes to what Bill was doing this time around. You know, he normally transformed into a Pokemon in like Fire Red, and then you have to transform him back into a human. But this game being all about fusion, of course he's going to fuse with a Pokemon. After helping Bill return to his normal self, we prepare for the second gym, which is about to be way more stressful than we had ever hoped for. I select my two Pokemon to enter in the battle. We got Frankie and Smash, and the first fusion is insanely cool, but luckily Frankie is a nice counter. But then Misty switches to the one thing I had never planned for. A Wonder Guard Hydreigon. Guys, this thing is Ghost and Dark type with Wonder Guard. It has one thing that can do damage to it, and that is is fairy, which of course I don't have. I mean, I remember I have Confused Ray on Reggie, which is my only way to get any damage off on him. And in the moment, I couldn't remember how this game even works. Depending on what the head is or the body is, is what makes up the Pokemon's HP. So this thing either has one HP with Shedinja or a lot of HP with Hydreigon. We just lost our starter. We just lost Whoop and almost lost the entire Nuzlocke. Are we about to lose here? We land the Confusion and luckily he hits himself and that's the only thing I can do. Yes, it had shed in just one HP. Thank God. After that, we secure our W and grab our second gym badge. We decided to unfuse Fluffy, which was really hard to do because it's so easy to get attached to these fusions. But I had to. Chat let me know Gengar got Levitate back in this game. So if I fuse him with Jolteon, that's Ghost Electric with Levitate. Chat decided to name this one Flotty after two supporters on the stream, Fluffy and Naughty. I started to get ready to go down the underground path, but then I learned something. The Ridge are apparently praised in Kanto as if you're rich, you can pass straight into Saffron with no problem. But hey, it works for me because now we can go get a Firestone and evolve our little pupper's leader. But I got ahead of myself because of course, if I'm proceeding through the game earlier than expected, the levels are going to be much higher. Not only are they super high, we ran into the god of all Pokemon fused with Arceus. And obviously, I'm starting to panic because I'm thinking we're gonna lose right here. But then I hear a little voice saying, hey, don't worry. Let me take this. Flotty, our newest addition, being ghost type, means Hyper Voice couldn't hit him, but also having Levitate means Earth Power couldn't touch him either. He saves us and allows us to proceed to get our Firestone and evolve our little baby pup. Then we did a little bit of gambling with the vending machine because you don't get water back if you do randomized items. You pay a certain amount and then get something completely random like a Master Ball. We had one more encounter we could get, and I wasn't ready for how insane this was going to be. Gardevoir and Cofagrigus. This fusion 
is absolutely nuts. But once again, the cycle of chat repeats itself. Seriously, prayers are just needed. What's wrong with y'all? So it's time to get ready for the third gym, and I'm trying to be the smart, responsible adult and do some grinding for my team so they get to a good level. But of course... Okay, you don't... My heart sank. No! The one who just saved us from the god of Pokemon was now sent to the underworld. Like, come on, man. That's three now. We've had Ace, then Whoop, and now Floddy. Man, I was just trying to grind up my team. I didn't realize he had knockoff and could just get one-shotted. So I ended up ending stream that night just filled with sorrow. It was a new day and time to move forward onto the SSN to see some really cool fusions and head to the third gem. And obviously, I'm a little nervous. This is where things can start to go really downhill. We've been losing mons left and right, and now we're going against the guy that was in the army, the most buff, diabolical gym leader in existence. Ah, we swept him so easily. That's a randomizer for you. After the gym, I was reminded we had some randomized fossils we could go get, and we got one of the best Pokemon we could have asked for. Another pseudo-dragon Pokemon on Salamence. I won't lose you like my last one, I promise. We train up the rest of our team and continue the glow up of our pup leader. At this point, I'm just wanting to find an Eviolite somewhere and go back and gamble for one because I love this fusion so much I can't imagine it gets better. But Chad assured me and thank God I trusted them. Now our team is just looking incredible. I immediately want to go fight the fourth gym, but once again this isn't any ordinary Kanto adventure. You have to take on the Pokemon Tower first, but then you head to the sewer. Yes, the sewers, like you're back in Yanova with black and white. This is where Team Rocket is hiding, and you have to defeat them before proceeding to the fourth gym. While doing so, I created some really cool new Pokemon fusions and caught a Meryl, which may not seem like much, but this baby has huge power. Meaning, if I take a Zoom roll and fuse it with anything, they are going to have the ability huge power. So we put that bad boy in the PC to save for later and ran to one of the coolest Pokemon we've seen yet. Now, I really want to know what artist went this hard for a Darkrai Clefable fusion. But now it's time to take on Giovanni, and I'm a bit underleveled, so I'm really nervous. And we have some really close calls losing Frankie, but luckily, it didn't amount to much as he had really terrible Pokemon, especially his ace. And now it was time to create some new fusions for the fourth gym. This one goes way too hard. Pinsir and Electivire, both really cool Pokemon, but put together, this is easily a 10 out of 10. Then, uh, myself in the chat noticed something. We had a Salamence. We also have a Zoomerol. We can create a dragon fairy type with huge power. Salamence gaining a fairy type and doubling his attack with huge power. There's no way this thing can be bad. Nah, for real, who's trolling me right now? Luckily, this new cursed Pokemon would help us in the fourth gym as it got randomized to a ground type. But here we go. First battle into the gym. Something is terrifying me. We have our pupper's leader out front, which is a fire and steel type. And then the opponent sends out a Mantine Doug Trio fusion. If you didn't know, Doug Trio has arena trap, so we could not switch out. Meaning leader is quad weak to ground and he's stuck into the battle. If they use bulldoze, he's dead. We've already lost so many fan favorites on this run. If I lose leader right here, it's basically losing one important mon per gym. And I'm going to be honest, I was already saying my goodbyes. I had no hope that we would survive this. But oddly enough, it led with using aqua ring and then next it went for air slash and a bit of hope was formed. Was our dog going to be okay? Was the AI throwing or did it just not have any ground moves? We attack again, another air slash. And then I realized only one more hit is needed. I have extreme speed. We go for that, and our dog lives to see another day. I cannot tell you how fast I ran to that PC to put Leader up. In no way should he be in a ground-type gym. He's safe for now. We make it to the gym leader who has some really cool Pokemon, but everything was basically a pushover except this one unbelievably cool fusion. Looks aside, though, it only had weak moves, and we grab our fourth gym badge, and we receive a Wonder Trade ticket. When you get this ticket, you can randomly trade one of your Pokemon for a random fusion. So we decided to do this, and what we received is just, I don't even know what to say. And I know what you're thinking, there's no way this Pokemon makes the team. But listen, it had the biggest glow up of the century. It's like going from me to Ryan Reynolds. How you doing? This final evolution looked amazing, but not only did it look great, it had a higher special attack than our Regigigas had attack. So this thing's gonna hit so hard. Mala was immediately added to the squad, and we got some new encounters and made some pretty cool fusions, but along the way, 
Here comes that terrible death. You see, we were trying to catch a Venusaur who was going for growth to buff his attack and using Double Edge doing insane damage. But one of our newest fusions was a Ghost type with Intimidate, so it was a perfect counter. But then, of course, as I send him in, it uses Razor Leaf and lands a crit. And just like that, we lost this amazing Ghost and Fighting type with Intimidate, one of the best mons we could have had. I wasn't as attached as, like, to Ace or Woot, but it still hurt to lose this guy because obviously he was going to help us on our journey. You know, I really wanted to make this joke that when one door closes, another one opens, but my mic won't reach that far. So just, just imagine it, okay? We found an Articuno and luckily caught it. I don't know what it is about our luck with these legendaries, but I'll take it. We ended up fusing this with Starmie that we got a couple of days ago, and this is one of the prettiest fusions yet. And we named this Naughty after a big supporter in the stream. And you might remember that name. You remember Flotty that we lost very early on? This was the same person, so this was my second chance. Finally a redemption arc for me to keep Naughty alive. Or so I thought. I went to bed happy that night with our brand new fusion, but I woke up the next morning and I... I have short-term memory loss. You see, it was a new stream, and I set out to do great things, but I completely forgot that Naughty was an ice type, and well... Alright, this is fine. It's fine. You think I'm afraid of you? Huh? Tough guy? You know, I, I don't even got an excuse for this one. It was it was bad. At this point, I wanted to give up. I couldn't show my face to chat, and especially Naughty, that I've already failed twice in this playthrough. Seriously, what am I doing? Two Pokemon have died in cold blood! But then, Barney became a member in my stream, and I realized that I love you and you love me. I don't know, just imagine that was something really spiritual for you. Anyways, we're in Sylvco now, and I learned that I have to evacuate all of the hostages to fight Giovanni. Remember, this is a Pokemon game. We finally rescue all the hostages, and it's finally time for Giovanni. But of course, here comes our rival first. His lead was amazing, a Mewtwo Machamp fusion. But as I'm admiring the design, I quickly realized I'm not supposed to be here. He's level 49, and my team is barely scraping at 40. I'm already fighting a legendary fusion almost 10 levels lower. How am I going to win this? I switch into my ghost type being super effective and being able to dodge his cross chop. And I realize he must not have anything for Cleo because he keeps bulking up. So luckily we're able to slaughter this Mewtwo and then the next few mons coming out being pretty easy. But then I make a massive mistake. You see, I had Smash out in the battle and I'm just assuming Smash can keep crush gripping everything and keep one shotting. But I get outsped by Charmeleon and Poliwhirl and he goes for belly drop. And if you didn't know, Crush Grip does more damage based on how much HP the opponent has. So the fact that he halved his HP really negated my Crush Grip. So now his attack is fully maxed out. Crush Grip does nothing. He's super effective on me, and I have no clean switch in. I end up switching to Frankie, and they go for Wake Up Slap, which does about half, so I'm terrified. I go for Pluck, and he ends up going for Flamethrower, which is special so he doesn't get that Belly Drum boost. Then this three-headed creature is somehow able to survive once again and clutch a victory. I mean, after losing Naughty just like that, I was not ready to lose another Mon, so thank God for Frankie. The last Mon comes out, which is a Jirachi and Kling Clang, and we knock it out easily. And then I immediately evacuate the building as I know I'm not supposed to be here and I'm supposed to go fight Koga. I head through the bike path and arrive at his front door, and I knew I had this win easily. I mean, if I'm getting past level 50s, I should win this no problem. And then the gym turns out to be water, which is perfect because my best Pokemon, Smash, is a grass type. Smash takes the lead and sweeps the team, even though he had like a mega swampert looking fusion, and we grab our next gym badge. Now it's time to go back to Giovanni, but listen up. It's a double battle this time around, and I hate double battles in Nuzlocke's because they can team up on one side, and I lose them on. But thankfully, Giovanni must be the worst mobster in history, as his team was dog water, and we sweep him easily. And this is just a reminder that Chaz has made absolutely zero progress on themselves. And then I'm getting all excited because this is the part in Pokemon where you get a Master Ball, and even though I've had amazing luck catching legendaries, I'll always take a free Master Ball. But, um, I forgot. I randomized items. Give me this. Thank you. Oh. What's even worse is the Pokemon we encountered directly after that. A Master Ball would have been so nice right now. But our lucky streak continues, and we managed to catch it. We then spent about 30 minutes unfusing and refusing new Pokemon to see what insane fusions we could create to ultimately build our team. Our final six is cracked, but this guy right here is probably the GOAT so far, so we named her Shoddy. You remember Floddy? You remember Naughty? This is third time's the charm. It is a Gardevoir and Rayquaza fusion 
legend named Shoddy. No way will I lose this Pokemon. Mark my words. We use this broken new team to sweep Sabrina, and then I learned you have to go to Sevi Islands before you can ever take on the seventh gym. And on the way there, my luck continued. We caught a Mew, Gyarados, Mimikyu, and Groudon. Dude, I need to go play the lottery or something. I, I'm on fire right now. Out of all four of those mons, here's the most broken one, though. Mimikyu. Mimikyu has the ability to disguise, and if you don't know what that is, it allows him to basically take a hit for free and not receive any damage. But here's the one thing I didn't realize about this game. His disguise resets every time he enters the battle, so it is a free switch hit at all times. Do not realize how broken that is? That's insane. He always has a disguise on. We fuse him and Gyarados together, and we add it to the team. We get past some grunts in the Sevi Islands, because I just want to see Giovanni again, all right? I've already swept him so many times. It's time to see what he's up. Up to. And then I uh, see him at a distance and I get a little curious. What? They have all three? Oh, they're gonna fuse it together. No, they're not. They are not about to fuse all three together. I just realized I'm about to have the fight of my career. I'm not kidding. I spent over an hour trying to analyze and predict what he's gonna do, what he's gonna have, and what team I should build. Because in my head, if he's fusing all three birds together, it could be four types being electric, ice, fire, and flying. So the main thing I was looking for is something to resist that and use rock type moves. Oh my God, he does have more than one Pokemon. He, it's not, oh, it's so cool. Whoa, whoa, they get to attack three times? I did not know that. I did not know that they all three got to attack. Okay, I, I get I get it now, I get it now. So you get to choose who you attack. I go to face him and I learn it's actually like fighting three Pokemon at once. I thought it was gonna be all three of them fused to be one Pokemon, but you're literally fighting Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres at the same time. All three of these Pokemon have their health bars, items, and own moves to attack me differently. But I've made it this far, I can't lose here. Articuno attacks first and gets an Omni Boost with Ancient Power. Luckily, our new Mimikyu fusion is able to knock out Moltres, but now he's already got an Omni Boost. If this thing has Freeze Dry, I'm dead. And surely enough, Articuno goes for Freeze Dry. With that Omni Boost and Articuno's special attack, there was no way that he could take this. There really wasn't a clean switch in for me. My main focus here was just to get through the battle, and I didn't have a good switch in. So, Hunter, I hate to lose you, man. You were so broken. I'm honestly shaking at this point, and I go to Matt, just hoping this new addition to our team that's Rock and Steel type can have some resistances and hit it with Rock type moves. But then Articuno Ancient Powers again, which, yeah, we resist great, but it Omni Boost again! It's now plus two in every stack. And I realize if Matt doesn't kill it here, we lose. Matt goes for Rock Blast, and believe it or not, this new lad crits and wipes out the Articuno. All that's left is Zapdos, which by itself is very easy. And we succeed, but we probably lost our most broken mom we've had this entire run. We say our goodbyes to Hunter, and then we head back to Cinnabar to get ready for the seventh gym. And now it's time to do some more rebuilding. We spent so much time worrying about that Articuno, we have to make a brand new team for this gym. And the chat ultimately voted for something that was really hard to do. We decided to unfuse Smash. This fusion's been with us since the first gym. Him, but I mean, only having Mega Drain is really hindering us, and there's a lot of better options in our PC. Luckily, there was a clear choice. We had Salamence and Kiram, but we ultimately went with Sylveon, making this a normal and fairy type, so fighting is now neutral, and you're only weak to poison and steel. <laughs> Yo! Why is the bow tie over the crotch? But the best part is how this game works. You see, having Regigigas as the body allows him to have his attack, his defense, and his speed. But with Sylveon as the head of the fusion, it has the special attack and special defense of Sylveon. I mean, just look at these stats, dude. It's broken. We ended up naming this Silo Smash. Silo showed an abundance of support in that stream. Thank you again. But we have to keep the Smash tradition alive. Also, I've been binging My Hero, and it kind of sounds like a My Hero attack. We go to fight Blame, which ends up ironically being an Ice-type gym as he's normally fire. And with our new additions on our team, this gym was a joke. Now I realize all that was left was one gym. We're back at it again with Giovanni. He turns out to be a dragon gym and has some of the coolest fusions we've seen on our entire journey. But with having Silo Smash and Shoddy, this gym was no joke and we grabbed our final gym badge. Feeling on top of the world, we head towards Victory Road to see some incredible fusions along the way. Here is where we'll catch our last two encounters. Apollo and one of the best Pokemon you could ever ask for in this game. 
Blissey. You remember how I explained how this game works, whether you're the body or the head of the Pokemon? Blissey has the most HP of any Pokemon tied with Eternatus Master Hand and then one of the highest special defenses of any Pokemon. So whoever Blissey is fused with, if it's the head of that Pokemon, it's going to be so bulky. And knowing I'm about to go against the Elite Four, I had the perfect fusion in the palm of my hand. I built my final team and prepared for the Elite Four. And here's the best team we could form. Leading off is Silo Smash, Fairy and Normal type with Knock Off, Crush Grip, Ice Punch, and Moonblast. Next up, we got Shoddy, still alive, Dragon and Fairy type with Calm Mind, Moonblast, Dragon Pulse, and Earth Power. Then we got Zook the Nuke, Electric and Bug type with Super Power, X Scissor, Thunder Punch, and Thunder Wave. And still with us from the beginning, we have Leader, Fire and Steel type with Iron Head, Extreme Speed, Fire Fang, and Night Slash. Next up is a new addition, we have Haggy, the Normal and Ground type with Earthquake, Rest, Lava Plume, and Bulk Up. Last but not least is another new addition, the thickest turtle around, Hunter, Water and Grass type with Ice Beam, Sleep Powder, Energy Ball, and Surf. I asked the chat if we should make the Elite Four a hardcore Nuzlocke, basically meaning no healing items in battle. It came down to 55% yes and 45% no. So now we are headed into the gates of hell. Up front, Lorelei. We lead off with Silo Smash against a Golabe, which is good for us, but then I noticed it was a Primate Fusion, which is what took away Naughty from us. So I'm not taking this lightly. We knock it out with Moonblast, and then it goes to Bytop, and I realize this is a Fighting-type Elite Four member, which is really not great for my team. I go to Zoo being Bug, so he will resist, and he manages to win, but renders him useless for the rest of the battle because he's so weak, and now we can't heal him. Next up is Prime Row, and the Fusion already has me chuckling, but, like, look at it. I switched to Silo to be able to take a hit, outspeed, and crush grip, but the worst thing happens. It goes for Final Gambit, taking itself out of the fight, but bringing Smash with it. Already in the first Elite Four member, we lose Smash that we have had almost this entire run. I just had a blank stare on my face for literally several minutes as the chat just spammed 07. Not only has Smash been with us so long, I was really expecting Smash to carry us through the entire Elite Four. We're only on the first member and we're down to five Pokemon. This wasn't looking good and probably the worst start we could ask for, but we managed to clean up Lorelei and move on to the second member. With Bruna, we plan to leave with our new bulky Mon Haggy, but I'm telling you, I'm so thankful we added this guy last minute. Turns out Bruno's a bug type trainer, but leads with a water type, which messes up Haggy completely. But the best thing about Haggy is it's so bulky and it has rest to heal him, which is really fantastic when you can't use healing items. But not only that, we equipped the Rocky Helmet, meaning every time they make contact with Haggy, the opponent takes damage. So basically my new strat is if I can't do any damage to the opponent, I send out Haggy, be able to just take hits, heal up, and allow Rocky Helmet to do all the work. Fortunately, Bruno had insanely weak mons. Two were down and only two left before the champion. Next is Electric type, which I'm immediately shouting for joy as Haggy's a ground type and a perfect counter. There could obviously be some issues with other typings, but we just spam EQ over and over and over and take down Agatha. Only one left, Lance. Now, I don't know if this is just randomizer luck or if it's set to be like this even in a randomizer, but Lance actually ended up being a dragon type. But he leaves with a dragon ice type, which is just terrible for Groudon. And the worst part about this is I'm about to throw it all away because I forgot to heal my PP for EQ, meaning I can't use it all of the battle and I can't use elixirs in battle. So Haggy, our MVP right now, was just severely nerfed. I try spamming Lava Plumes because with Serene Grace as our ability, we have a 60% chance to burn. I end up getting one off and switching to Shoddy, hoping for a Dragon move to come in because we're Fairy, but in comes Blizzard, which does insane damage to us. I don't know if I was just panicking or what, but this was the worst play I could have ever made, making our fairy type just completely useless against a dragon type trainer. This burger of a play for me could decide whether we win or lose here. I have to switch Shoddy out because I can't take a single hit, and I go into Haggy for brick breaks, but then he withdraws to a dragon electric type, which once again, I don't have Earthquake. I use Lava Plumes to go for the burn again and rest and allow Rocky Helmet to do the work for me. Out next is Lucario and Zekrom. Earthquake
Quake would have been great. Also, side note, these fusions are so freaking cool. I love this game. Even though he's a Lucario, he's going for dragon moves. So I tried doing the same thing, going for burns and plan to heal at the end as I'm eating up those dragon hits. I finally get the burn, but listen, if I had not got that burn in an alternate universe, Groudon would have died right here. I survived in the red, but only because I got that beautiful burn. I switch into Zook to let the burn kill, and then he brings out Farnite, who luckily turns out to be dragon and flying and misses Air Slash on Zook. We switch to Leader to resist, but it ends up getting a crit Brave Bird. I land an Iron Head and then an E-Speed to finish it off. Lastly comes out a Cursed Dragonite Fusion. And I may not have an Ice-type Fusion on the team, but luckily our new addition, Hunter, does have E-Speed, which one-shots his Pokemon, no problem, and we finish off lands. All that's left is the champion. And first things first, I make sure to heal up my Lava Plumes and Earthquakes with an Elixir. And then we head in to face our rival. The only thing I know is his ace is gonna still be that Untrio, which I'm not worried about, so I lead with Haggy and run into a fighting type. I switch into Shoddy and easily kill it with Moonblast. He goes to Untrio, and I prepare to switch only to realize he has arena trap. So basically, I can't switch out. I have to just try and moonblast this thing and get rid of it because Shoddy's trapped in. I go for my moonblast, but not only does he outspeed me, he uses Earthquake and crits me. Filled with regret, I'm immediately thinking back to when this rival even got this abomination. How on earth did this kill this? If you take one lesson away from this video, it's just life isn't fair. Not only am I devastated losing one of my favorite fusions, this would be the third and final time I have failed Naughty. First with the Jolteon, then the Articuno, and now this in our very last fight. If you're still watching at this point in the video, thank you, but can we please spam in the comments, RIP times three Naughty, to show your respects. This has to be my greatest failure to Naughty and to just lose this beautiful Dragon and Fairy Carnivore and Rayquaza fusion. In the moment, I start to think back to all the amazing Pokemon we've lost along the way. We have to make sure we secure this win now for every single one of them. We switch into Hunter who easily kills Untrio. If he didn't have Arena Trap, that thing would have been no problem for us. And I still think that critical hit mattered. If it didn't crit us, I believe we killed it with Moonblast, no problem. He switches into a Fire Fusion. Ha, <laughs> get it? It's fire. And we easily one-shot it. Then comes out Persian and Victory Bell. I go to Zook expecting it to be grass and it ends up being poison and almost kills me and has Sticky Bar. And then I realize I'm just choking at this point. We lost Smash and we lost Shoddy. I, I just, I'm panicking. I go to Leader and finish it off. I just can't choke anymore. No more losing Pokemon. It goes to a Magnezone and Chansey Fusion, which was pretty easy to kill. Then I realize he has one last Pokemon. This last Pokemon decides everything. Whether we win or we lose, it decides our fate. And then this Pokemon came out of the Pokeball. I put everything into this final attack. Our entire journey, every beautiful partner we lost, we finish off with one final hit. We land our attack and finish it off to become the Pokemon champion.